There it is. We getting it in, 11 o'clock. We're gonna be unpacking the Weebo app tonight. So, this is enough time for you to do a few things. Like what? Hit that subscribe button, right? Let's go ahead and take care of that. Boom. Turn on the bell notifications if you haven't, so you can get notified when we go live. We're gonna unpack this thing here tonight. And then um, we're gonna be breaking down the Weebo app. So as usual, let me know where you're watching from. If you're watching the replay, let us know in the comment section. And let's get ready. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and hit that at Brown Report. Check me out on Instagram. We brought the Ferrari out today. I met up with my good friend who has a Lamborghini. We took the toys out for a quick minute today. So you can check all that behind the scenes footage out right there on Instagram. So if you're not following me there, check me out there for some behind the scenes stuff. Then it's a good time to tap in. Let your friends know that you here. You know what I'm saying? Don't keep all the goodness to yourself. Let your people know what's going on. Tell them tap in, subscribe, check out the live show. We're breaking down the Weebo app tonight. We're gonna walk through pretty much the whole app. That's my goal tonight. We're gonna walk through what it is, what's the benefits of using it, how to use it, how to find stocks, options, all kind of good stuff. So it's gonna be good. Mm, 60 seconds. And it's gonna be interesting. So let me know where you watching from. I always like to know that. We got Joseph in the building saying late show, but I don't care because I love your video. Welcome to the party. Nia from Mansfield, Texas. Welcome to the party. Oh, four seconds. Cue the intro. Let's go. What's up, Power Traders? Welcome to uh, the Brown Report, sponsored by Power Trades University. So, what are we doing tonight? Well, you should know by the title. We're diving into the WeWo app. We're going to do something a little different. We're going to do it live. So, instead of pre recording and uploading the video, we're going to do it live here. I'm going to share my screen in a moment, but really, I'm not sharing my screen. I'm going to be sharing my iPhone here. And we're going to be walking through the Weebo app. But first, I want to just shout out some people who are up rocking with me late at night. Um, if you're watching the replay, let us know in the comments where you're watching from. You got Proactive, Pro Blackdive, my bad, Pro Blackdive checking in from Oak Town, Cali. You got Mackam 101 checking in from Indianapolis. Leroy is tapping in from New Jersey. Then my man German Zonko checking in from. Uh, Canada, EJ is checking in from the Midwest. Welcome to the live stream, EJ. I always like shouting people out who are up rocking with me live and in real time. So let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen. Like I said, we're tapping into the Weebo app tonight, but, but as we get ready, um, let me switch over here as we pull up the Weebo app. And this is the first time I've ever done this where I shared my phone screen live online. So we'll see how this goes. Um, but we got the setup. We're ready for it. I think it's going to work out pretty good. So let me just switch to iPhone and me. So I got the iPhone right there off to the side. You guys should be able to see it. Um, let me know if I need to zoom it in or not. I think it's okay 
how it looks right now. And so we're going to unlock it. And um, by the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, um, be sure to join us on Instagram for some of the behind the scenes stuff. Like, what well, what was we doing behind the scenes? Well, obviously I was doing that, but me and my good buddy, we brought the toys out today. He had the Lambo out. I brought the Ferrari out. We had a little bit of fun. So go check that stuff out. But anyway, we're not here to talk about Instagram or anything like that. So let's get into it. Let's open up the Webull app. So obviously the first thing you're going to want to do, if you don't have the app, you're going to want to download it um, and make sure you have it. Now, if you are not familiar with Webull, it's a mobile trading platform. They have a desktop version. I did a couple tutorials on it, but primarily it's used for mobile, um, the mobile portion of the suite. You also get a free stock or two from opening an account. So if you don't have an account, you can always check us out on our tools page, which is thebrownreport.com forward slash tools. And you can see all the tools that we like. I shouldn't say all, most of the tools that we like to use and how you can get a free stock. So go there, thebrownreport.com forward slash tools. You can check that out. And you can open an account with Webull if you like what we're talking about tonight. Get a free stock. You'll get a free stock. I'll get a free stock. And as you refer friends to it, you'll get a free stock. Now, they're not sponsoring or paying for this or anything, but I think it's one of the most simple platforms to use, especially if you're a new trader or you're a mobile trader, which really speaks to a lot of the millennials who are like, some of them don't even have a computer. They're like, all I got is my cell phone. So what app would you recommend? All right. And Robinhood is cool too, but right now I'm really liking Webull. So let's go back to the side by side view and then let's dive into the Webull app, my good friends. All right. So let's do it. We're going to hit the Webull button. We're going to pull it up. So right there on the screen, you should be able to see it pretty um, pretty good. Let me back out. So this is what your home screen is going to look like on the Webull app. So any, these are all the positions, all the stocks that I own um, in Webull. So you can see there's a lot of different stocks that I own. Now, some of this is just from them giving me a free stock. Doesn't mean I technically um, bought the stock. But all right. So on your home screen, the first thing is going to have you can see to the left, um, it's a little star right down here at the bottom. I hope you can see it. Let me zoom out a little bit. There it is. You see it says watch list right there at the bottom. So that's what your bottom row is going to like. First thing is your watch list. And it's going to be defaulted to your positions. Okay, but if you click the top hamburger button in the top left corner, you can switch to my watch list. I have a watch list called my watch list. So there's no stocks on there. Then I have a watch list where I'm tracking NFTs, which are non-fungible tokens. Um, if you're into the whole Bitcoin thing, if you're into non-fungible tokens, which is like digital art, digital moments that you can own. These are some of the companies that I'm just paying attention to. And you can click the plus button and you can create a new list. So if you want to say, Say you want to watch like um, tech stocks, right? So you would just click that, hit tech stocks. Now, if you're from Canada or somewhere else, you can click the currency and select the country in which the dollar value that you want to see it in. I'm going to leave mine in USD because I'm in the US. Just hit save. And then boom, just like that, I created a new tech stock watch list. Now, pretty simple. If you want to add certain stocks to that, you're just going to hit the plus symbol, hit add symbol. They're going to give you some suggestions. Let's go ahead and add the good boys Apple. OK. Um, and then what's interesting is once you add, once you hit that, it doesn't actually add it to the watch list. So you see how we came back and it's not there. So we're going to show you a little trick. You're going to click add symbol. Let's say you want Apple. Um, you well, they got your history down here, so you can hit the plus sign. But let's just say Apple wasn't down there. Let's just say you wanted to add um, what's another tech stock? Let's say AMD, which is a tech stock, a semiconductor. You would have to type AMD, 
And then that plus sign off to the right, you'd have to press that. And then it's going to say, what watch list do you want to add it to? We're going to go ahead and hit tech stocks by putting a check in that tech stock box. And then we're going to hit done. So it could be a little confusing because you're like, oh, how come it didn't add? I touched on it. So boom, just that quickly, we got a new watch list called tech stock. So we got my positions, my watch list, non-fungible tokens, and then we got tech stocks, all right? So let's keep going across the bottom row so you can understand what's happening with the bottom row. So the next button is market. So when you click on the markets, across the top, it's gonna show you, number one, what's going on in the United States. So the United States is going to be comprised of the Dow Jones. You see that there, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Right now it's on the Dow Jones. If I tap the S&P 500, um, it's, these graphs should switch. You see that? So Dow Jones is that line. S&P 500 is that line. NASDAQ is that line. Now, if that looks confusing to you, don't worry. All three of the major indices are up top. So Dow is in blue. S&P 500 is in purple. NASDAQ is in green. Really what this will allow you to do, um, one way to look at it is this will allow you to compare how the three indices are all doing. So you're like, okay, just at a quick glance, who's the laggard? If you look at it at a quick glance, it looks like the S&P 500 is the leader. Why? Because the purple line is up top. Let me zoom in, make sure you can see that. All right, you see how the purple line is up top. So the S&P 500 is kind of on top. Dow Jones is bringing up the close second, and then the NASDAQ is bringing up the rear. Well, that makes sense because the NASDAQ recently sold off. So I'm just trying to show with you how to watch that. Now, if you're into crypto, you're just going to click crypto. It's going to bring up all your cryptocurrency stuff, your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, your Lit Litcoin, Litecoin. How do you pronounce that? Litcoin, Litecoin, all the Bitcoin stuff. Um, that you want to see is going to be there. You're going to see your Dogecoin, you know, all your different coins. So Bitcoin is a thing. Um, and if you're following that, you should be able to track it right here from the app. And if you're in any other country, you can click Canada and you can see the Canadian equivalent or any other country. Now, let's just say you're not from the U.S. Excuse me for one second. I'm going to take a drink. By the way, if you're rocking with me this late, go ahead and get you a drink. Okay. Mm. Okay, so let's just say you're not from Canada and you're not from the U.S. Well, what do you do? I've got something for you, my friend. You hit the three hamburger button. So I'm going to do it again. Matter of fact, let me zoom out because you can't see it. Okay, there it is. You see the... What's interesting is even though we're live at 11 o'clock at night, my phone says it's 941. I'm not sure why it does that when you plug it into the computer, but if you're not from the U.S. and you're not from Canada, you just hit the three little slashes in the top right corner. It's going to bring up the different countries. OK, so if you're from China, just click China, India, Denmark, Iceland, whatever the case may be. If you're like, I don't care about Canada, don't want to see it. Just hit the negative symbol on Canada and then that takes it off. Right. And so. Let's hit that negative symbol and then hit the check mark and boom, Canada isn't on there anymore. If you don't care about crypto, same thing. Bring it back up, hit the negative um, symbol in the right corner over crypto, but that doesn't save it. You have to hit the check mark in the top right corner in order for it to save. And I'm going to I'm not going to hit the check mark because I would like to keep crypto up there just for I don't know just because I like to know what's going on, whether I'm trading it or not. Now, you scroll down a little bit more, you're going to see advances and decline distribution. Now, some people have no idea what this means. This basically means it's taking the stocks and it's saying, now, I'm not 100% sure how it's computing the stocks total, that are available in the market. So I'm not sure how it came up with, if you add the 4,275 to 2,071, I'm not sure how it came up with 
is it saying that out of 6,000 total stocks, but 6,000 what out of the total market, the pink sheet market, the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the Russell? Um, what is it computing? Because the Russell 1000 could have 1,000 stocks. So it's definitely not grabbing everything. So I'm not 100% sure what is it grabbing the 6,000 or so stocks from. But what it's basically telling you, there was 4,000 275 stocks that however their algorithm picks up on were declining today and then if you look at the graph it's like how much did they decline by so 15 stocks fell 15 percent or more 77 stocks fell 10 percent or more 406 stocks fell between 10 and 5 percent 1374 stocks fell between 5 and 2 percent 2403 stocks fell 2 percent okay so why is this information important is um <laughs> why is this i'm laughing at red man's comment by the way we got your email um be on the lookout for an email from us so why is this information important okay it may or may not be important but it depends like if you're trained on how to decipher this information it could mean something to you so if the majority of the stocks only fail two percent then you're like, ah, that wasn't like a big bearish day. However, what if the graph changed and the majority of the stocks, like 2,400, fell 15% or more? That would let you know like, whoa, something is seriously bearish and bad going on right now in the market. And it might trigger you to say, maybe I should look for protection with put options, or maybe I should close out some of my bullish trades. The other thing is, you also may say, I'm looking for some stocks to short. So you might want to go into look at the decliners and check out the stocks that fell 15% or more and say, okay, is there an opportunity to buy put options? So that's one way that you can use the advanced decliners. Same thing with the advancement side. So it's like, okay, 1500 stocks moved about zero to 2%, not really overly bullish, but what if 1500 stocks moved 10 to 15% versus the 49 stocks that are in there. Does that make sense? Let me zoom that in just to make sure you guys can see that. Okay, so what if it was reversed and 1,500 of the stocks moved 10 to 15% or 30, uh, moved 15% or more instead of 33 stocks? You might be like, whoa, this was a bullish day. What happened in the market? As well as how can I take advantage of those stocks? All right. Now, if I had, if Webull is watching and I had some feedback for them, when I, um, I don't know if you, well, you can see it on the screen, but when I click on it, it doesn't tell me the actual individual stocks. I'm zooming that back down. It doesn't tell me which stocks actually are the 15 that fell, which stocks are the actual 33 that were up by 15%. So if you're Webull and you work for the company and you want some feedback on your app, it would be nice to touch on the screen right there and I can sort and find out, well, what are the stock? What are the 15 stocks that fell 15%? What are the 33 stocks that were up by 15%? That would be nice to know. What are the 1,500 stocks that moved 2% today? Unfortunately, you can't click in it and just do that. So uh, I wish they would update that. All right. So if you scroll down a little bit more, you can see the net inflows into the market. Um, what this will basically tell you, is there cash coming in or is there cash sitting on the sidelines now this is showing the nasdaq if i scroll back up and i click the s p 500 i thought this would change it should change or it should have changed but it didn't to the s p 500 to show me the net inflows all right so again if you're working for the company switching from the dow to the nasdaq to the s p should change the net inflow, but it doesn't. So if you're clicking that button and you're like, what's up with that? Well, talk to the people at Weeble. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about the top gainers. Pre-market, after hours, and one day. 
this can be very cool for you, okay? Because you may say, all right, maybe you work a job. And this is one of the things I hear from people a lot. I work a job. I can't keep up with the market and this and that. That's just an excuse. If you know how to use the tools, you should always be informed. So what does that mean? You should literally be able to come to the app and say, click on one day. So that means today, one day's worth of time. And then you can say, what were the top gainers in the market today? You can literally see the stocks that moved today. So like UTME moved um, 110%. So a stock that moved 110% and it's trading at $82, what must it have been trading at to move 110%? About $41, does that make sense? So if it was trading at 41, it's now trading at 82, it moved 100% today. So if you click on UTME, what you'll get is a chart. So you'll get a couple things. You get the name of the company, UTME, it trades on the NASDAQ, so that should tell you what automatically. Does anybody know? Type it in, type it in while we take another sip. This is a nice margarita. Well, it used to be a margarita. Um, it's almost done now. But if you notice that UTME trades on the NASDAQ, what technically is that telling you about the stock? Type it in. We're not giving away any prizes just yet for this, but I'm just curious. I want to see how your brain works. Do you know what that should be telling you? What type of stock is it? If you know nothing about that company, Okay, I'm going to give you five seconds. We're going to have to get some Jeopardy music on here. Like, doo, 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 doo. Okay, Joseph, maybe I should give away a prize since Joseph um, picked it. Um, Joseph said it first, but my man Jerry is chiming in next, right? Absolutely. It's telling you that it's a tech stock, right? So it's trading on the NASDAQ. Typically, the NASDAQ is of tech stocks and biotech stocks, okay? So, we know that it's a tech stock. You can tell the previous open was about $54, right? And then you can see um, the day's range. It opened at about 53.66 or something like that and ran up as high as a hundred and seven dollars so what what should be going off in your head your head should be saying what in the world made a stock and you can see right here let me zoom it in you should be able to also see that um let me pull this down there we go so you should also be able to see that the stock is up $43 on the day. You can see that 4317, 110%. Um, and then you got some after hours information. But the first thing that should tell you or tell me is like, let's go look at what this company does and why were they up 100% today? Was there some announcement? Was there some breakthrough in technology? Like, why would a stock move 100% in a day? So we don't know that answer, but I'm trying to show you how to use the app to get a clue of what you can start to say, hmm, let's pay attention. It's on the NASDAQ tech stock. It's up 100%. What happened today? Why? All right, and then you can kind of go in and look at some news. Below that, and you can see 7.06 million is the volume. And then below that, you can come down here to a chart. You can look at a weekly, a monthly, quarterly, yearly. So a couple things to notice. As I click on daily, there's only one chart, like two candlesticks. If you click on weekly, there's only one candlestick. If I click on monthly, it's only one candlestick. So what that should be telling you is the fact that this is an IPO. This is a brand new company. That's what that's telling me immediately. Because if I click on week, there's no previous information but before April 6th and April 7th. So that's telling me this is a brand new company that hit the market. So now I have an idea of why maybe it shot up. Maybe it's a hot IPO, right? Because um, there's no other information. So if I come down here, if I click news, 
Um, this is kind of giving me news on, let's see, is this giving me news on the stock? Men after towards the end of the trading day, blah, blah, blah. The US has the highest case. Linden, you got Snap, MSGE, RPM. Okay, so here we go. So once you hit news and scroll down, uh, right here, UTE shares shot up 139% to 93.10. On Tuesday, after the company prices IPO shares at four dollars a share, so it goes into what I just said. This is probably a brand new company who had a hot IPO. Well, there it is. IPO, I guess, came out at four, jumped to forty-four yesterday. Then today, jumped again another hundred percent. I don't know exactly what this company does, but that is how you can use the news to kind of find out, like, oh, okay, that's what's going on with this company. Right. So that's really all from that tab. Let's go back to the home screen and continue to move down. So, again, you can look at the top gainers and kind of get gather some information like that. I'm not going to go through the rest of them. You can also sort and say what's happening pre-market. So if a company is moving pre-market that. You know, you like what's happening before the market open, you can find out. We could also click after hours. Is there any company that's blowing up after hours? Well, you can see that AVCT is up 48% after hours. Hmm, why? Click on it, go down here, hit news, and you can kind of see, uh, let's click the first one, six hours ago from the Dow Jones. American Virtual Cloud Inc. surged 41% in after hours trading following the disclosure of an unsolicited non binding takeover proposal. So, this company is a takeover candidate, and perhaps somebody is getting ready to buy the company. Is this helpful? Is this making sense of how to kind of navigate the app and how to think about how to potentially find trades or at least at the bare minimum be in the know? With what's going on in the stock market if this is helpful let me know send some emojis um up and let me know that this is helpful for you okay now we can scroll down and look at the top losers same thing okay pre-market is over because the market is closed so the only thing that'll be beneficial at this point is after hours so we want to see is there any stocks that are tanking after hours by how much of a percent are they tanking? And then what are they currently trading at? So you can kind of use the same approach for the top losers and say what's happening after hours, or you can click the one day button. Let me see, you can click the one day button. And then you can say, okay, what stocks were losers today? But I think the one day and the after hours, no, they're different. So on the one day button, for example, you can see that FGen fell 43%. 43%. That means it lost almost 50% of its value in one day. What does Fibrogen do? Don't know. Let's click in it. Okay, they're NASTEC. With a name like Fibrogen, not only are they tech, but they're most likely biotech. Does that make sense? So they're most likely a biotech company. Scroll down here to news. Check out what's going on. Um, so they announced an investigation in the shareholders claim. So anytime you see the word investigation, that's probably never a good, um, thing on April 6th, after the market closed, Fibrogen issued a statement of clarification of certain prior disclosures of U S primary cardiovascular safety analysis from the Rosacadustus phase three program for the treatment of anemia of chronic kidney disease. The company stated that the safety analysis included post hoc changes to the stratification factor. Fibrogen further revealed that based on analysis using the pre-specified stratification factors, the company cannot conclude that the redoxidus reduces the risk in dialysis in MACE and MACE plus and incident. So basically, just a short version, it sounds like they just found out their stuff doesn't work, basically. I don't know. That's the quick answer of what I got from it. But this is just how you can navigate the market. Now, scroll down. You got something here called most active. All right. Most active are going to give you what was most active by volume, by percent turnover, by percent range. Okay. So 
this UTME is obviously right back down here, up 136 percent 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 turnover. I believe that is how many of the shares turned over and traded hands today. I'm not 100 percent sure, but volume is what had the most volume either come in or out of it. Then at the bottom, you can check out hot ETFs. OK, now, how do they determine what's hot? Have no idea. OK, so let's go back. They're telling you this is hot. Six percent is not hot to me. But what's cool about it, you can click view all. And now you can see the overall market, but then you can drill down and say, OK, what industries were specifically, quote unquote, hot today? Um, looks like energy at 4.94 percent is the biggest gainer. And then if you scroll down a little further, you got commodities at 5.40 percent. So these are ETFs that either contain energy or commodities that were moving today. And then you can click in it and you can see what are the stocks, what are the energy stocks that were actually moving today? It looks like the biggest one was DBE and Vesco DB Energy. So just pretty interesting, pretty interesting stuff. All right. Um, Joseph says, do you avoid biotech or any specific sector or industry group? I heard that some people avoid biotech. I'm not a big fan on biotech just simply because there's so much news involved with biotech. There's so much science of approval, disapproval. It worked. Now it doesn't work. It worked. But now we found it has a side effect that I don't, I don't, I don't really mess around with biotech. So eh, those are my thoughts on biotech. Okay. But that's how you use the hot ETFs. All right. Then you come down here, you got best performing industries. You can say best performing on the day, best performing over the last five days, best performing over the last month. You just click on month, best performing over the last three months, which means over the last quarter. And also, which means you've been through an earnings cycle. OK, so this is pretty interesting. You can look at uranium. It looks like over the last quarter, 34 percent has been one of the best performing. If you click in it, they give you a breakdown of some of the stocks that are in there. So ah, I don't know. Use it for what you will. All right. If you hit the middle button, it actually pulls up your personal account. So this is my account. I got about two grand in this account. Uh, they'll tell you the value of your account. They'll tell you your positions. Nothing really special to look at on that tab. And then if you click the community tab, um, you know, they usually have some type of competitions and stuff where you can play games, different things like that. Um, news streams. I don't know what 24 seven is. Let's click on that. Yeah, I'm not really sure what 24 seven is just 24 seven news. What is that? Then you got your watch list. Nothing really crazy there. Then if you hit the menu. So again, if you sign up using our link, you'll get a free stock. If you click on free stock. It'll tell you if you have a free stock. That's what that screen looks like. And then you got your alerts. So if you want to set an alert on a stock, so there's no feed alerts. I'm not even sure what feed alerts are, but let's say you want to set an alert on a stock. Go hit the alert button, hit the plus sign, type in the symbol AMD. Let's just say you want to know when the price gets above. It's currently trading at 82.20. You're like, I'm interested in AMD above 83 or 84. You're going to hit 84, hit the dot zero zero, and you're going to say, I want to know if this stock gets above 84. Now you could say, let me know if there's some new news on there. I don't care to do that. Price movement, sharp rise. But what do they consider a sharp rise or a sharp fall? I don't know what Webull considers a sharp rise or a sharp fall. So I'm not interested in that. I mean, I guess you could turn it on just to see what happens, but I don't know what they consider a sharp rise or sharp fall. You could also say, let me know if it hits a new 52 week high or 52 week low. And then there's a schedule price alert. So you can say every day. So again, this is especially for my people who work jobs. You can say every day at 3.30, I want to know what the stock price is. So shoot me an alert 
every trading day at 3.30, let me know what the stock trading price is. That's actually kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna probably turn that alert off because I don't care to know what AMD is doing every day at 3.30. Also keep in mind it's in military time. So you just got a minus 12 from it. So 15.30 minus 12 is 3.30, all right? For anybody who's a little confused on that. So I'm gonna turn that off. You could also get an alert based on strategy. So if you're a moving average trader, you can say, let me know if it surpassed the 50 day moving average, five day, 10 day, 20 day, whatever. I wish you could come in here and customize it. What if you want to know about the 200 day? It doesn't give you that option. All right. So that's literally how you can set an alert. I want to know if it moves above 84. I'm just going to hit save and boom. Now I have an alert set for AMD. So that's how you would use an alert. If I posted something in their forum, um, I probably said something random. That's what it is. Favorites. I don't have any articles saved as favorites. I don't use this for that. Calendar. You could see who has earnings coming up today or more importantly, who has earnings coming up tomorrow. And let's say Constellation Brands, okay? So Constellation Brands, they make what, like cereal and stuff like that? Click on it, you get your chart. What I would like to see them do with this app that they're not doing, I would like for them to tell me if the earnings is before the market opens or if it's after it closes. Um, it's not really telling you. It says earnings expected. Can you guys see that? Let me zoom in. Give me one second here. See where it says earnings expected right there. So it tells you the day, but it doesn't necessarily tell you, oh, it says before opening. So good. I still would rather see it right here on this screen. Like forget the estimate. Are they announcing before or after the market? But if you click on it, wait, 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 where'd it go? we we'll go back to calendar. We go to tomorrow. We go Constellation Brands, click on it. I would have loved to have seen it right here in this screen, but if we click on it, it'll tell us right here. We can also click the calendar and it says they want to access my iCalendar if they want to put that on my calendar so that I know that this is an event that's coming up. Um, but I'm going to cancel that right now because I don't, I don't want that putting it on my calendar. So I guess that's kind of cool. Um, that you can see earnings coming up, you can see dividends coming up, and then any IPOs. And this is important, economic data. So you're like, is there any big economic data? I would look at this week versus a day. And I would come down here and say, what's coming out from an economic standpoint? Oh, wheat is inspected. Okay, soybeans. This is only important if you trade commodities. If you don't trade commodities, you don't really care about wheat, soybeans, anything like that. But what you would care about is if the Fed is going to be discussing interest rates, whether they're raising it or lowering it, or if we're going to get the inflation numbers, if we're going to get the, uh, what, what what's the numbers called? Where it's like the, the GDP numbers, right? The gross domestic product numbers. So something like that, you might be interested in knowing like, oh, snap, that's coming up this week. Maybe I don't want to trade because that could affect my investments or affect the market, stuff like that. You got ex dividends, IPO, more economic data, so job opening, stuff like that, earnings, ex dividend. I'm just scrolling down as far as I can scroll. So those are cool things to use the app for as far as the calendar. Now, probably last, but definitely not least, let's talk about paper trading. So for all my people who want to practice, there's some good and some bad about the paper trading with Webull. Okay, first, the good. They have paper trading. You can set your amount. So let's just say, by the way, if you're paper trading, you always want to trade with an amount that is realistic to how much money you have. If you don't have a million dollars, you want to put yourself in a position, theoretically, of making, like I've only got $5,000, I want to try to simulate what decisions I would make with 5000 so if you hit the reset button, you can change that balance to five, one, two, three, five thousand dollars confirm the reset and boom, let's refresh. Let's go back in the paper trading 
and voila, now I got a $5,000 account. So it's more realistic of what I would, the decisions that I would make with $5,000. Here's the problem with this though. Here's my problem with this. Okay. If I were to place a trade in the paper trading account and say, I want an Apple, you're about to see the problem right here, right now. So I'm paper trading, right? So I click paper trade and I can either buy or I can click the sell button. I can sell how many I want to do 10 shares. Okay. If you don't see the problem, I'm about to explain the problem to you right now. They don't allow for you to practice trading options. I'm a big options trader and we teach options. We teach people how to supercharge with options, how to minimize their risk with options. To me, if you're working for Webull and you're watching this, I think that's one of the biggest flaws of the paper trading is we don't have options data here because I mean, I could just get out a scrap piece of paper and buy a stock, right? I can just, oh, as I bought it today, Apple at 128. That doesn't really help me. I mean, you could get used to putting in limit orders or market orders. Um, you can say, I don't want to pay any more than, you know, 128 for this. And then is that good for the day or good to cancel? Um, don't want to place it extended hours means after hours or pre-market. I don't know that that's stuff you need to practice. You really need to practice. What happens if I buy a call? What happens if I buy a put? What happens at expiration? If it's in the money, will I get called out? Do I got to close it? And so I really, really would like to see the app evolve and add options as part of the paper trading. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, as we get ready to wrap up, I hope this has been helpful. Just vibing with me tonight, going through the Weeboy app, checking it out pound for pound, what it can do, how to use some of the features. If you don't have the app, you can go to thebrownreport.com forward slash tools. Use our link through there. You'll get a free stock. I'll get a free stock. Help you start your journey with some free stock. And then you can also use the app. I did see a question come in that says, what was one of my favorite apps to use? I kind of use all of them. I like to use, um, if I'm trading, I use Charles Schwab. Okay, so that's my primary account. But paper trading, um, you can use Webull, TD, not TD, yeah, TD Ameritrade. I have the E-Trade app. Um, I have them all because I just like to test them out and see how they work, but they all kind of serve a different purpose. Some are good at getting me to the news quick, some are good at paper trading better. Some are good at making real trades better and giving me streaming quotes and different uh, information that I need. So they all have something that they do really well and they have some stuff that they do kind of eh, not so well. You know what I'm saying? So thanks for hanging out with me. Um, if you're watching the replay, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you can get notified um, when we go live. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good night.